Assalamu alaikum. Everyone is ready to go home? No, yes, yes, no, no. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. My brothers and sisters, it's really very humbling, very exciting, very energizing, very motivating what has happened here over the last three days. It's really an honor for Islamic Circle of North America to host such a gathering. I was just now at the volunteer meeting uh, across the street, and they were sharing their experiences. And they were so energized, and they were so excited. One of them stood up and said, I really can't thank you enough for I can't thank you enough for really allowing me to do that, even though he is volunteering. So, my brothers and sisters, it's an honor to be allowed to be involved in the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is an honor. We are so thankful to Allah that during these times, the sea of changes that is happening around us, it is a blessing, a true mercy of Allah that He has created you and made you and I a Muslim. Just imagine a state of somebody who has no faith in God, someone who is unfortunate to have no connection to Allah. And if you think of that person to be on the other side of the election results process, just imagine that person or that group's frustration. Imagine what they were, they're, they're going through in terms of anger, emotions. What is going to happen to the way of our lives? But you and I, my brothers and sisters, are so blessed and so fortunate that we have Allah as our protector. I want to share with you some ayat of Quran and a hadith that is really has touched my heart. And that is that word of wisdom in times such as these, when we open the book of Allah, when we read the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we realize the wisdom. And in times such as these, these words become so powerful. You know, when you are going through a personal challenge in your life, it's a family issue or a personal issue, whatever that may be. And then you look at the book of Allah and you open it and you read some verses and you look at the translation or you understand the context, you see the wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِنْدَهُ مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَلَا رَطِبٍ وَلَا يَابِسْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمِ I don't know about where you are from, but I'm from Kentucky. And one of the things, if you haven't been to uh, the Smoky Mountains, maybe plan your next vacation trip there. Very, very beautiful. In the months of October, that's where the speak season is. And I know in probably D.C. area and surrounding areas, the fall season is so beautiful. This year, after the, the trees were falling, uh, the, 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 the leaves were falling, not the trees. The leaves were falling, and I had to rake them from my front yard. I'll tell you, it was, it was a task. And here in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that He knows about every single tree that's fallen. 
you can only imagine, you can only imagine the vastness and the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he talks about the bahr. And I was thinking about it when I read this ayah for the first time, I was sharing it with someone. I remembered the Malaysian airline flight that was, that disappeared in the China Sea about a few years ago. And one, one day they were showing on, showing a report about the discovery process and the vessels that were deployed to find that, that, that airplane. And they were showing a vast segment of the ocean. There was a huge, it was like, I think it was from a helicopter that was, they were taking some shots. And when you look at it, you can't just look at it and think about, Ya Allah, if something is lost in this water, in this vast body of ocean, how am I going to know? But the claim here is, my brothers and sisters, this gives us the, and tells us about the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ This is the ayah, that is the topic that was given to me. And when you reflect on this ayah, and the meanings are, say, O Prophet of Allah, to these believers, or say, O believers, nothing is going to hit us except what was already ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huwa maulana. And you have to spend some great amount of effort to understand the word mawla and what it means, and we don't have the time. Huwa maulana. The easiest translation, he's our protector. He's our protector. He wants to protect us, and he has the ability to protect us. And only to Allah or on Allah, the believers would have complete reliance. There was a, a famous hadith by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu uh, He says, one day I was riding behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It was probably a camel or a horse. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa turned to him and said, Ya ghulam, oh boy, oh young man. Inni u'allimuka kalimat. Inni u'allimuka kalimat. I'm going to teach you some words. Ihfadillaha yahfadk. Ihfadillaha yahfadk. Ihfadillaha tajidhu tijahak. Ida sa'alta fas'alillah. Wa ida sta'anta fasta'in billah. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ وَإِنْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَ إِلَّا قَدْ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامُ وَجُفَّتِ الصُّحُفُ And this is a Hadith on Hassan. Wallahi is a beautiful hadith. If we can only internalize the meanings of this hadith, we would be not afraid of anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihfadillah. And this word is so beautiful, if you start to dissect the word and try to reflect on the meanings, you start to understand. Ihfadillah. Do I remember Allah? So it says it means remember Allah. Safeguard the remembrance of Allah. Act upon the teachings and the guidance and the commands of Allah. There's so many meanings in this, in this one single sentence. The Prophet ﷺ was given jawami'ul kalim. He was given the ability to ha have concise speech. 
with words of wisdom that span and has so many meanings and it's so deep. If you do that, if you remember Allah, He's going to be turned to you. Just like you and I am talking, if I'm talking to you and I turn to you and I look you up in the face, you know that I have, you have my full attention. Tajidhu tijahak. Ida sa'alta fas'alillah. When you ask, you don't have to worry about, I'm going to ask this person or that person. That doesn't mean you don't take care of the means. It means that you are in your heart convinced that if someone can help me, it's only going to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter the pro what the problem is. I was walking to the, <laughs> I was walking to the, uh, to the podium here. I'm saying, yeah, Allah, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to articulate what I want to say. Help me. I'm late on my homework assignment and my thoughts are not together. And I'm thinking, yeah, Allah, please help me. Well, I try to do that. Do that and see the results. Do that with the conviction that Allah is going to help me. No matter what the issue is, if you want to ask, and you start to realize that, oh my God, I have to ask for everything to Allah. I have so many needs. I want so many wants. But you know what? The issue is, you are going to be able to do that if your connection to Allah is very good. Just think of the single simple scenario. You do something really good to your parents. Parents said you clean up your room, you know, have everything done before you leave the house and you've done it. As you leave, you say, mom, I'm gonna be late, right? You know mom's not gonna be happy with that. But she'll let it go because she, you just did something. The connection between you and your parent was good at the time and you cashed it right away. Everything like that, like that applies. You're working for your boss and you give him, give him an excellent report and you say, you know, hey, uh, I'm gonna take uh, next Monday off, is that okay? It works, right? When you ask of anything, if you have the firm belief in your heart that it's only going to be Allah who is going to be able to help you, see what the results will be. But your connection, your connection, and the connection is through those commands that we talked about. You've heard so many examples of that. When that connection is strong, wallahi, it works. It works, no matter what the issue may be. Ya Allah, this happened to me. I have an issue with my taxes, it's coming up. You know, you have two more days left here. Some of you may be just filling it out. Well, once you're going back home, you say, Ya Allah, help me out. I think I owe some taxes this year. What, what am I gonna do? Wallahi, it works. But you have to have that connection. My brothers and sisters, let me see how much time I left here. Uh, okay, we still okay. I wanna share with you, we've talked about a lot of concepts and a lot of iman and a lot of belief. And you've heard a lot of different ideas, but I want to kind of leave with you and share with you some practical tips as to what are some of the things in this time and age as the world is changing around us and you are wondering, what can I do? So before I begin that, I want to kind of finish the hadith and the, the words of the hadith. You ask Allah only and believe in the fact that if the entire world and the nations of the world wanted to benefit you of something, of something that Allah has not already ordained for you, they are not going to be able to do that, and vice versa. Rufi'atil aqlam wa juffatil suhuf. Rufi'atil aqlam wa juffatil suhuf. I mean, if you understand that concept, it's already been decided, it's already been done. Nothing is going to, if it's not destined for you, the, the word asaba, that something is going to hit me. And there's another narration, uh, the Prophet says, whatever hits you wasn't gonna miss you. 
because it was destined for you. When you say asaba, that means it's go it was destined for that. It was like a bullseye, right? It's, it was going to hit that point. It's not going to be, it's not going to miss you. And whatever missed you, I just swung my car and I, you know, saved myself and my family. Ah. Alhamdulillah, it was, my, you know, it, was, it was my expert driving, the years of experience. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Wallahi, that's not how it works. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it wasn't your time. It wasn't, your, it wasn't going to happen to you and Allah saved you, whatever the, the means are. That concept, if it really enters your heart, you understand it in the right way, you will be free of any issues. You'll be free of any worries. You're not going to worry about anything. You're going to be focused on what is, what is the true work that needs to be done. Rufi'atil aqlam wa juffati suhuf. The ink has dried. The pens were removed. And the ink has dried. Illa fi kitabin mubin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whatever is going to happen has already been recorded. And I don't want to open the whole issue of Jabr and Qadr, but that's not my point here. The point I'm trying to make, my brothers and sisters, when you believe in the Qadr of Allah and the Qudra of Allah, you save yourself from so many disappointments, sadness, anxiety, disbelief even. Even disbelief sometimes. May Allah save us from that. My brothers and sisters, in the coming weeks and months, the Muslim community may be challenged. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us safe and protected. But there are some things I wanted to share with you, something you can just take food for thought, something you can do at home. Be a better Muslim. Just be a better Muslim. Be a better neighbor. And this part will not be complete if I, if I don't share with you this, this story that I've shared so many times and it really hits home. I have a, a neighbor who's been in the military. Uh, his name is Jack. I love to tell his story. So Jack uh, and I always talk about stuff and he will ask me all sorts of questions about Islam and Muslims. He's a big Trump supporter and obviously uh, we, we, we discuss and debate that. But he's a very nice guy. And uh, every time his computer has issues or his printer doesn't work, he would call me, I'm his IT support. Uh, about three years ago, one day I woke up and I heard uh, the lawnmower going in the backyard. I'm like, wait a second, my son wasn't home, so who's doing the lawn mowing? <laughs> and I look outside and Jack has apparently bought a riding mower and our backyards are connected in the back. So he was kind of doing the backyard. So, and he did his and he did mine. So, after he was done and he came up uh, to the front, I went outside and met, say, hey, thanks, Jack, I really appreciate it. Uh, you didn't have to do that. Uh, he said, no, you got other things to worry about. I'll, I'll take care of that. For three years until today, he, every week during the summer, he's doing my backyard and front yard. We have a kind of a little larger backyard. So, my brothers and sisters, when you have that connection to your neighbors and they know, and I want to make a point here, our neighbors may, at this point, may not need to know about the five pillars of Islam, but they need to know that you're not going to kill them. You need to have that relationship with your neighbors the ability to talk to them. So, <laughs> last two months ago, he would send me an email, Jack, same guy. He sends me an email, he says, Javed, what's taqiyya means in, in Arabic? And I thought it was pretty, very interesting and very telling of the kind of information, the sources he's getting from. And I told him, taqiyya, which, you know, is to pretend something and hide something, that's the, the Arabic word meaning. And I explained to him, I said, look, the Prophet of Islam has told, has told us a Muslim can be coward, a Muslim can be cheap, 
but he cannot be a liar. Your neighbor needs to know that. By being concerned, by being connected, by having a conversation with them, if everyone in this conference made sure the neighbors on the right and left, maybe front and back of their houses, just those, even there's a scholarship definition about who the neighbors are and how many 40 houses to the left, 40 houses to the right, and all that discussion. That's a, that's a separate discussion. But if you only take care of your neighbors on the left and right, alhamdulillah, I was just told we had over 21 thousand people attended this conference. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. 21,000, the numbers were just shared with me. So over 21,000 people, if, if each and every one of you focused on that, just imagine, just imagine from a statistical point of view, what kind of impact you will make. If nothing else, my brothers and sisters, take a take-home message. Make sure people around you know you and be a good Muslim. That's very plain and simple. By you being the example and following the example of Prophet Sallallahu you, you know, we are doing all sorts of stuff. We are raising funds. We are starting our organizations. We are doing uh, activism. We are, all that is great. But it starts from the basics. If your character, if your attitude, if your promises, if your language, if your friends, if how you look, if your behavior resembles that of a Muslim, wallahi, we have no problems. And Allah will protect us, inshallah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless each and every one in this gathering. Islamic Circle of North America, is committed to the betterment of society, including the Muslim community and others. We are committed to bringing the true message of Islam to our fellow American citizens. You have heard it multiple times. There are a number of activities going on. There was a date that was announced earlier, and I was requested to repeat that on May 1st and 2nd. You know, people were asking about specific action items on May 1st and 2nd. Go to the icnacsj.org website and register yourself to be here in DC. We are commemorating the third Muslim Capitol Hill Day. Register. Have an opportunity, and here's, I'm going to tell you something. You may be a bit disappointed, but it's really a beacon of light. I was talking to uh, the organizers, and they said the U.S. CMO, which is the U.S. Council for Muslim Organizations, the U.S. CMO is, we are doing it, this under the umbrella of U.S. CMO, which is, you know, a collection of a lot of Muslim uh, organizations. The Jewish lobby brings thousands of people for their Capitol Hill Day. We as Muslims have now an opportunity. We are organizing, we are doing this together from a single platform. Do your part. Do your part, register for that, attend that. If people from outside of DC area can come in, we will even be, if you cannot afford your accommodation for a, two, a day or two, let us know. But if you can't join us, it makes a difference when you and I, or people from the constituency, from the constituency of those uh, senators and congressmen are there and want to talk to them, they, will, they have an obligation to talk to you. 
or at least a senior member of their staff. So register, inshallah ta'ala. Keep us in your dua. And as you leave the convention center, make dua for the organizers who have done a marvelous job. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. Wa akhru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.